right now we're in the digital age where there's multitude of data that is coming in from your mobile behavior, from your web behavior, from your social media, uh, from your transactions that you're doing in, from your traditional credit bureau. There's a lot of data that is there on you as, a, as an individual. And when, as a business, I'm taking access to that data, it's what I do with it. How I have understood the data, how I have processed it, how I have analyzed it, and then using that to make decisions hmm. on what I could offer then to this particular customer. Hi, welcome to the innovation ecosystem. Uh, Bharat, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Bharat Vello, General Manager for the APAC region at Provenir. Provenir is a risk decisioning SaaS platform uh, which helps financial institutions, fintechs, and other digital businesses uh, to quickly roll out their products um, and uh, offer uh, digital journeys um, together with um, uh, a data marketplace that we have, which brings in um, data providers which are providing uh, uh, solutions from uh, alternative data to open banking data to um, ID and fraud data to KYC and AML data. Um, and we bring to that together with a visual studio where you could build your rules uh, from, from your credit policy to your fraud uh, uh, policy to your onboarding policy. Um, we also have uh, an AI studio which helps you to then get this data, the decisions that your rules are making, learn from it and build models which will help you uh, make these decisions much more accurately. Okay, that's interesting. Um, that's like a really a whole suite of a whole suite of things. Maybe to help people kind of visualize it a little bit more, could you give kind of a tangible example yeah. of 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 how you operate or how companies work with you? All right, um, we'll take an example of a, a digital lending fintech. Okay. Right. Uh, and they are offering unsecured loans to customers. Um, so a customer comes in to their app, uh, files an application, um, puts in the information that they have, which is could be a lot of information about their employment, income streams, and they they click submit. Right. right? Now, how do you make that customer experience where today's uh, generation, which expects on-demand uh, service from from for, be it financial products or any other digital product, right? So when they press submit, what, how this fintech would then make those decisions is using our solution. So they would take that information data, send it over to our solution. On our solution, they would have configured the rules of their credit policy. So based on the data that is coming in from the applicant um, and based on the other third party data that they would bring in, be it from a fraud point of view, from mm -hmm. our marketplace, be it from the traditional credit bureau if there is information available. But as in the case of Philippines, there's almost a majority of population which is not on the credit bureau. So you would have to rely on alternative data providers, providers who are looking at your mobile and, and social data or your um, uh, uh, behavior on, uh, say, social media. So a lot of these different other data points that, they would, that you would bring in and you would build rules around it to make a decision on whether you would want to provide this loan mm. and the, all this happens in a real in real time in the, in the instant of you click submit and you get a decision yes your loan is approved for this much amount at this price that bit is could be configured on our studio mm. by bringing in this different data points writing your credit policy rules around it any scorecards checks that you would do and then making the decision on how much you would lend to that customer at what uh, price or interest rate that you would lend to for what tenor. So all those things could be programmed on onto a decisioning uh, flow where so, a real-time decision comes back. So if I understand it correctly, um, I'll, I'll try and weave it together. What you're saying is you automate and, con well, you consolidate and automate policies and processes that used to be done manually yes. um, from many different sources 
so that decisions can be made also automatically or at least rapidly. Yeah, instantaneously. That's what we were looking for. Understand. So basically, all basically what you're doing is automating the decision process. Yes. Got it. Okay. Um, and when you automate the decision process, um, are you doing this? Uh, are you making decisions? Procedurally or predictively? Procedurally to start with, and right. that is where I mentioned our AI studio. Okay. Where, based on the decisions that you're making, our AI learns from that, on the quality of the decision, how many of your outcomes are you actually getting right, right. and what part of the data is actually playing a factor in that becoming an accurate decision or not. And then our AI studio would build a predictive model which from going forward would then help you kind of make those decisions. Uh, so moving on from something which is procedural to something which becomes more predictive in nature because it asked AI studio has learned from the decisions that have happened. Uh, so it's all plugged in, it's in a single um, uh, platform itself. So you, you could kind of start out, if you are a fintech who is just starting out, you don't have any customers, any data. You can't go on to a predictive model immediately because you don't have any basis for predictions. So initially start out by building out something based on your experience and judgments, build out a decision flow, and then turn on the AI studio, which usually it takes 2,000 to 2,500 decisions for it to build a model. So yeah. you, you could do that in a couple of months with nowadays with FinTech. So then you would move on to something which is much more predictive. So if I understand it correctly, if I was going to describe Provenir, it would be like fast decisions, good decisions. Like that? Yeah, fast decisions, accurate decisions. Accurate decisions, got it. Fast decisions, accurate decisions, got it. Okay, so that, from a simple standpoint, guys, that's Provenir. Yeah. All right. Sometimes Thanks for simplifying it. I think I <laughs> complicated it well, a bit when I give my overview. It, it's okay. We, we, you know, technologists are very, you, you know, you're like experts. Like you know so much stuff. Sometimes like putting it into a framework where people can understand it is a little difficult. Well, thanks okay. for that. You're like the decisions company. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, in this in this world, I guess there's a lot of, there's a lot of money in making decisions, I guess. Yeah, that's the core At, of any business, you make decisions. Right. Well, I want to ask it this way, because obviously, there are obvious low-hanging fruits for decision makers, like say, people who give out loans, yeah. or you know, people who you know, approve for insurance, or, or things along the, those are obvious. Yeah. Tell us about some companies that that are, that are using the decision company to make decisions that were unexpected to you? Like, I think very interesting use cases definitely were, I think in, in, in APAC, we have a FinTech in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, we can't even call them a FinTech. It, it's basically a super app. Let's call them a super app. Right. They do everything from deliveries to, to taxis to finance, Right. So they, they, they've got everything on their They're app. They're all over the place. All over the place. <laughs> and they also use decision uh, engines, uh, not just from a, uh, from a credit point of view, uh, but they've also kind of deployed it uh, to identify within their delivery drivers. Uh, they've been, they've, they're able to do some kind of uh, rating around which delivery drivers, their behavior, based on their behavior, Again, they're collecting data. There's a lot mm -hmm. of data coming in from the delivery drivers and their behavior. They're able to kind of take that behavior and are able to whitelist. Whitelist is a, is a wrong word for it, but they're able to almost rate their, their delivery drivers to have identified those drivers who would have propensity for some of their other services. Wow. It's like, it's like social scoring for services. Yeah. So based on behavior on the right. app. Right, 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 right. Right? So they're looking at the yeah. behavior on the app. It, it's, how are they delivering timely? What ratings they are getting? And which regions do they work in? Right. Usually, are they busy? So there's a lot of data that's coming in. And they've used that to kind of 
Nice. Rate them and grade them and say that you know what these this group of delivery delivery drivers for us uh, have a higher propensity for us to be offered wow. this an insurance or uh, and some of the other financial products. So that I found was very interesting. Yeah. So you're ba so basically you're also involved in decisions for social scoring. Yeah. As in, eventually wow. you could imagine this, right? It's a studio where it is allowing you to orchestrate data, and this data could be your internal data, external data. You bring in the data, orchestrate the data by building rules around it, and those rules there's no limitation, right? As in, you could kind of build rules that you yeah. could come up with to say, hey, I would want to use this data and build out these rules. So it's allowing you to build out this model okay. of playing around with this data and having these rules work on top of the data and giving you output, giving you decisions. When, when, when I was young, there was this novelty toy called the Magic 8 Ball. Right. <laughs> sort of shake it and it give you. A, is that your interface? <laughs> that's, 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 such a, that's a great way to put, put it, right? It is the eight ball. It is the eight ball in that sense that where you, you're shaking it and you're like, okay, do I yeah. make a decision on this customer right. or this transaction? Oh, and in it this says, particular hey, case, it's, got, it's like an eight ball. It's with an like API. A with it's an API. It's, it's an eight a, ball with it, an API. It's an API ball. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It's an eight ball with an API. If I could, I. Next time I'm going to say that. <laughs> what do you guys do? We are an eight ball with an API. We are the magic eight ball with an API. Nice. Okay, I get it. I get it. Oh, all right. And and so it's basically anywhere where you can where you can make a decision. And some of these decision makers are very. That's interesting. So yeah, really good decisions are money. Yeah. Absolutely. I think as in uh, between um, it's, it's a hyper competitive space, right? As in any business now. Uh, you, you're out there competing with this uh, businesses, other businesses which are coming in, they're also adopting technology, they're also coming in aggressively to kind of go after market share. How do you differentiate yourself right now? As in even now, now especially, I think the last two years have been very kind mm. in terms of easy access to capital, mm -hmm. um, any startup could come in and raise millions right. uh, to go after market share. Um, now it's coming to a phase where money is difficult to come by. It will not be that as easy as the last two years. So as a business, uh, what will kind of really differentiate you is what decisions have you built it on? What decisions have you built your business on? Um, so what kind of customers have you onboarded? How have you onboarded those customers? What quality are you maintaining on these customers? So, and what products are you offering? And what is the basis of offering these products to these customers? That will differentiate you now from the other businesses. Really, it, it's very interesting that you say that because, you know, uh, we we see a lot of. Uh, I mean, you're really monetizing decision making, and it's very it's fascinating for me to hear this because. I hear, you know, there, there are these things that, you know, people say and like the, the things that I, I hear say inside of this community is like, data is the new gold. But it kind of sounds to me like what you're saying is, no, that's an old school thought, Brad. Actually, decisions are the new gold. <laughs> yeah. Data is the, the, the raw gold that you would mine right. out. Yeah. Right. So you mined out and you found this data, and it's a raw gold ore. Right. What do you do with that? I right? understand. Or you have to refine it. You have to make it valuable. Right. And then say you've got an asset there. You've got something which which is valuable there. So when you get all this data, different data from this, right now we're in the digital age where there's multitude of data that is coming in from your mobile behavior, from your web behavior, from your social media, uh, from your transactions that you're doing in, from your traditional credit bureau. There's a lot of data that is there on you as, a, as an individual. And when as a business I'm taking access to that data, it's what I do with it. How I have understood the data, how I have processed it, how I have analyzed it, and then using that to make decisions hmm. on what I could offer then to this particular customer, right? So data is, I would say, if it is gold, it is in that raw ore form uh, and what you make of it, refine it and make it valuable is where we come into picture. It's like, okay, play around with all this data, bring in all the data, but then 
make sure that you have the right decisions that you could build around on the, on top of this data. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, play around with this a little bit for a moment. So essentially, now what's kind of happening is you've automated and streamlined, and you've uh, and you have the a and you have AI making decisions. Is this the sort of same thing? that we see inside of, say, I don't know, the robotics industry? Yeah. So, yes. As in automation, anywhere right. where we're doing this automation, right, uh, there's either a rules-based automation or now there is the artificial intelligence-based uh, automation which is driven by advanced data analytics and machine learning models. Right. Uh, so yes, as in any automation, robotics, is, there's a decision behind it, either it is rules-based, so the primitive form of robotics is the rules based where you had robots which you specifically have, uh, have written down rules for them on what mm -hmm. those robots could do, right? Their tasks are very defined right? and they have rules around that. The advanced robotics that we're seeing right now are the ones which are based on machine learning and advanced data analytics. So they are making predictive decisions, they're making decisions on uh, scenarios which are not necessarily written down in rules for them. Mm -hmm. They've learned from the previous data that they have to pre have make predictive decision on something which is coming up uh, to them. So yeah, so I would I would link it to uh, so, robotics. So well. in a way, in a way, you, in the way that I, I guess you could say, uh, Say Boston Dynamics uh, will create a robot dog or a, you know a, a bipedal human-like robot. Basically, what you do is you take corporations and turn them into the same kind of artificial entity. But instead of it doing like physical work, it's it's an artificial entity that does decision-making work. Absolutely. So your interface with your customers, you're you're basically saying this is the experience I want to give my customers. These are the products I want to offer my customers the engine, the neural network behind it, the engine behind it uh, is run by uh, our product. So it's very similar to what you said with Boston Dynamics, right? If a robot is doing it, the neural network behind it, the engine which is making those decisions, there is, uh, uh, that's what is driving that robot to behave or do what it is doing. Similarly, as a business, if you have decided that this is the experience I want to give to my customers mm -hmm. when they come to my portal or they come to my app, and these are the products that I have for offer for them. How do you now automate the rest of it? You have your products, you have your customer coming in. All right. Getting them to together, saying that, okay, for this customer, this is the product, and this is how it will be offered based on this information and this data. So the entire neural network, the entire engine of it, the brains of it, is what uh, our product is. Okay, now I'm going to deviate a little bit from the conversation because I will... Uh, so inside of the thing that you're talking about, there is a sub-conversation that people have, which is, well, what are the rule, new rule, roles of humans inside of this, inside of this thing? If we're, having, uh, if we're having a system that customers prefer, right, because it's fast and it makes accurate decisions and, and, and the corporation obviously prefers it, it's it very, it's also for the same reason, yeah. right? Is there a role for human beings inside of those kind of systems or is it better if they're just fully automated? I think what, what, what humans will move towards is move away from the menial and the repetitive uh, tasks to more analytical Right. Does, right? And then so when we are saying that, yes, there is a predictive element of it, that's designed by a human, right? So there is a data analyst at work who's kind of thought through on the, on the, on the model, right? So a lot of the work would go uh, higher on the value chain. Right. From, we would not rely on human effort just to eyeball a paper or just to do a checkbox on all the things that have been collected or just to do a calculation of A plus B plus C, right? Those, those tasks are moving 
towards programs, right? right? We have now very advanced programs to do that. But the work that is done in defining those programs, in coding those programs, that is where human effort would move towards. So in other words, even though there's automation, there's it's not like automation is perfect and it still needs to be supervised. It needs to be designed. And it needs to be designed. It needs to be uh, monitored. It needs to be. So, even with the AI models, we have a monitoring mechanism where all the metrics are coming in where, within our studio. You will be able to then see the performance of the model, rate it, change it, tweak it. Hmm. And that needs a data scientist, a data analyst to do that. So. Right. The, the kind of humans who are now work, interacting with our application and working with our application on, on our application are doing really the high-end value work. Whereas previously, if you had processes, you would have had a lot of humans to collect this information, to do the calculations, to make a decision. And that was what was introducing the, uh, the time and delay in, into the customer experience. Right. Um, What's happening now is the customer experience is on demand, instantaneous, and that is being powered by programs. So it must be very interesting. So you have these analysts who are, I guess you can say, turning interpretation into equation. Yes, that's what they're doing. They're going in there and they're looking at the performance of their models. They're looking at, okay, I've been making these decisions. What has been the performance of that? Uh, of those like for our business from a business metrics point of view how many of my application applicants have i been able to convert successfully Understood. and offer a product what has been the performance of the product once i have made a decision on that applicant so a lot of these metrics are then analyzed and accordingly you go back and say you know what i want to tweak my model or you want to, i want to tweak the data that i want to work with mm. this data is not proving to be as efficient in driving my decisions i want to as, uh, get access to some new data forms and build that into my decision flow. So, a lot of these decisions, these kind of analysis is being done by uh, uh, humans. Wonderful. Bharat, it was really a pleasure talking to you. It was similarly a great chat, Brad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.